Welcome to Monday Night Locked Up RC, whatever you want to call this. <clears throat> uh, we will repost this, I suspect, on our YouTube page. So if I seem a little broadcastery, I hope you'll forgive me. Um, but that is the plan. Uh, I've got a little bit of a different setup tonight. Um, in terms of where the camera is, it's on a boom, so we can move it in and out if we decide we want to do that. Um, but I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Uh, what we're going to be doing tonight is uh, installing our new uh, HD three-link kit for the TF2. Um, it's a little bit different from the RC four-wheel drive kit. It's got some steel link mounts, um, <clears throat> and we give you the option to use Traxxas rod ends. Um, that's something that we've actually had a lot of people request, so hopefully everybody's happy with this. Um, there are a couple of things that we'll go across as we're installing this. Uh, I've already taken out my transmission. Uh, if any of you have checked out the three link kit, you'll see. Uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. If any of you have checked out the three link kit, you will see that they do require some slight radiusing to get those mounts onto your axle housings. Uh, required you to radius the. Uh, The spring purchase. So I already went ahead and did that because um, I don't really want to have sparks flying, smacking my webcam. That would not be good. But I just got some of our parts laid out. Um, oh, Travis, we love you too. Shoot fireballs like the Mario. Like a absolutely, it can shoot fireballs. So many, it's not even funny. Hadn't really considered a fireball option on the three link for the RCs because it, it doesn't do a whole lot for scale points, but thank you for the idea. We will add that to a future release, I'm sure. <clears throat> so this is our replica um, 76. K5 Blazer that was built uh, by Wes Bracewell. Uh, he did fantastic work. Um, all sorts of pictures of that have been posted. As you can see, it's collected a little bit of dust here in the shop because we have not gotten around to finishing it out, which seems to happen to lots of our stuff. But that's okay. Because now we're rocking and rolling. So I went ahead and I removed the body. Um, a couple of things, uh, like I said ahead of time, I removed the transmission um, just to make it uh, a little bit of a faster video. Like I said, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to post this as somewhat of an instructional video on our YouTube channel. Um, I've got all the different parts that come with our kit laid out here, minus the transmission, of course. Um, rod ends, hardware, uh, it's a pretty simple installation. Um, if you guys come up with any questions, feel free to ask. If there's anything random that you want to throw in, feel free to throw it in. Um, but that aside, I'm going to get right to it. <clears throat> um, I believe the first thing I'm going to want to do is just to make access for everything a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheels and tires. So <clears throat> on this K5, we've got our 155 Iconic A08s, some of our scale hardware, and uh, our Ultra Hubs. So, requires a tool, we'll get that peeled off. Uh, see. And the, the fit on these tools is always so tight, but once you get it in there, it's in there. Um, Generally, when I'm doing stuff like this, I, I like to remove the wheels and tires. You probably don't have to, um, but I feel like it just makes my life a little bit easier in the long run. Let's 
So these screws that you're seeing up here, that was just my hardware. Um, the body mounts up from underneath. So that's what that stuff is. Uh, I guess I'll put this over here. If any of you don't know about our Ultra Hubs, um, these are our nut replacement version. I hope that's in view. So it's actually got a, a pressed in nylock nut in there. So I find they work just as well as regular wheel nuts, provided you keep up with them, you know, just like a regular wheel nut. So let's see, we can probably put that up there, don't hit that. Uh, so I believe the first thing we're going to want to do <clears throat> is to remove all of the leaf spring uh, mounts. Uh, let me see. So these are a little bit larger. If anybody watching has a TF2 and has in already installed uh, an RC four wheel drive through link kit, would love to hear about your experience. Feel free to post up about it. Um, this is the, actually the first one I've done. I was kind of hesitant to do it on the Blazer um, because I know the the one to one, you know, has leaf springs. But then hey, lots of one to one guys replace leaf springs with link suspensions and I think the performance benefit in the front will be worth it I know I guess I've come from ah, I didn't need to take those out that was silly <clears throat> I come from having owned lots of Jeep Cherokees so I am used to a linked front and a leafed rear I don't know why I just I feel like it works for me I find that even when I build SCX-10 suspensions, I end up with kind of a, I'll call it a floppy front and a kind of stiff rear. That sounds bad taken out of context, so I hope no one's gonna use that against me in the future. <laughs> I've got some uh, music going in the background. I hope that's not too loud for anybody. If anybody's having problems hearing me, please post up. I guess I could put that in a comment. So, <clears throat> hmm, decisions, decisions. Probably gonna go ahead and just, well, I'm sure this might be easier. I'm gonna pull the shocks from the towers. I'm sure a lot of this is probably not completely necessary uh, in terms of getting our kit on, but I just kind of like to start with a fresh slate. Um, and now this TF2, when I picked it up, was actually secondhand. So some of the parts that are on here may not be exact to what the regular kit comes with shocks, spacers, things like that. What's up, John? I'm gonna try to keep these parts separate. Okay, so, uh, oh yeah, I guess we can pull that off of the servo arm. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the servo where it is. Um, so this will make my life easier a little bit later. <clears throat> so I think the last step to getting our leaf springs off is just gonna be to remove these two screws. Oh, now here's, here's one of the second hand, I guess, uh, traps. So our previous owner 
and you can tell this has been run, but not a whole lot. Our previous owner had run some longer screws through here and added block nuts. Um, the housings are not stripped, but I guess this was just a little bit of extra insurance. The only thing that I've found is that it makes it less fun to take apart. So I probably will not be reinstalling the lock nuts. Um, I mean, they're not the worst thing in the world or anything, but I just don't think that they're absolutely necessary. What's up, Leon? What am I watching? Blended. Can you guys hear the music in the background, or is that just for my own benefit? I mean, I call it music, but really it's just like an endless loop of, of sound. I thought that actually might be nicer than just if someone tunes in and I'm not actively talking. Because honestly, I can only talk for so long. But <clears throat> if I'm not actively talking, I figured at least that way they'd hear something, right? My voice is a little sketchy tonight because... Uh, I went to a, a music festival here in Austin yesterday. So, you know. Okay, so I think that's the end of all of our leaf springs. So, the one thing, like I said, that I had done ahead of time, uh, I had to radius the housing, um, and that's because our heavy-duty link mounts, they're steel, but we also have a different radius on the inside and then these stock RC four-wheel drive mounts. Um, and we did that just because we don't want these things to ever, ever, ever break. Um, so this would be the pan hard mount. I don't have an RC four wheel drive version here, um, but I'll try and hold this to where you guys can see it. Maybe if I hold it against that background, I don't know. Um, it's got a nice big radius on the inside. Um, I just ground these down with a Dremel, um, you know, went across once or twice, and then I kind of came back with a nail file. Uh, this is aluminum, so it's it's pretty easy to work with. What I usually do is I'll just, you know, take a little bit off and then try and mount it, look from the side, see if I see any daylight. If I don't see any daylight, uh, then I feel like I'm good to go. So, getting into our kit, I've got all of our hardware that would come with the kit just in these little containers to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, spacers, this should be all on the rod ends. I don't need just yet. Um, so to put our kit on, basically I'm just going to start with, let's see, the axle parts. I'll get the axle all done, and then I will move over to uh, the chassis ends, and then we'll get it all together. Um, I'm not actually following any set of instructions right now. Uh, I have not created a set of instructions for our kit yet. I'm pretty sure most of you guys could follow uh, the RC four-wheel drive instructions and have no problems installing this kit. Um, because ours is, is so similar, um, you know, we're basically just offering some upgraded parts, some different rod ends, some different link lengths. Um, I, I feel like uh, you guys can probably just make do with that. Um, I guess I could have them pulled up, but I don't. So, um, let's see. So, our pan hard is going to be on this side. Um, we are going to end up with our three link mount on top of both of these. It's not really a whole lot of rocket science into this. So let's see what we've got. Uh, where did I put to? There we go. So anybody else doing anything fun tonight? Or am I the only one working on stuff? I can't be. As much as everybody wrenches. Who's working on what tonight? Anybody doing anything cool? Post up, let me know. Um, let's see. And uh, I guess to continue the trend that I started from last week, because as I mentioned, I'm a fan of dad jokes. If you guys have any good dad jokes, let me know. I love them and my kids hate them. It's perfect. But really, for this video, um, I'm going to try to do some sort of giveaway. I have not figured out what we'll give away yet. Maybe we could give away one of these kits. Let's see. 
maybe what we'll do is let's see let's get some visitor posts on the locked up rc page if you guys have a tf2 and you are interested in one of our heavy duty three link kits um, go ahead and post up a picture of your tf2 on our site and i don't know tell us hey i want one of your kits and uh we will randomly select someone that posts up and since we we have just started doing these videos um, there's not going to be a ton of people watching so your chances of actually winning something are pretty high i think so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna i tighten this down but i'm gonna loosen it up just for a second just to make all of this go in a little bit easier there we go i hope this is all still visible i have to get used to having the camera right here and and sitting sideways. Hopefully I'm not blocking too much. But hoping that you guys can see what's going on. I suppose I could move the camera in a little bit closer, but I might cut something out. I don't know. Let's see. What do we think? Of course, there's a delay from me moving the camera to what I see on my screen. So I don't know if it'll actually make things better or worse, but that's okay. So we've got the links on, um, no problems there. Um, let's see, what else goes on the axle? That's all the axle. So what did I say we were gonna do? I said we we're gonna put the link mounts on and then we'd roll over to the chassis, right? So I will set the housing aside for now and we'll get to town on this chassis. So the chassis link mounts are gonna look pretty familiar. That's okay. <clears throat> well, see, now I just went and dumped this over. Parts everywhere. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, nobody else working on anything cool tonight? Is anybody working on something that's not cool that they're embarrassed to tell me about? I mean, I can't imagine that you guys are doing that, but. You know, let me know. I'm starting to think that uh, you guys are just not working on things. That, that can't be the case. Um, when you go to assemble these chassis mounts, I will tell you that it is a pretty tight fit. Um, if you're trying to slide one in from the bottom, sometimes it goes in nice and easy. Uh, sometimes it's a little tight. So if you have a problem, kind of come in from the inside. I don't know how else to explain that. Um, that seems to make it line up perfectly. Let me see. Uh, for these kits, we do include all of the hardware that you will need um, if you are replacing your leaf springs. Uh, the reason for that is just, I have no idea of knowing what people already have on their chassis and I don't really like to expect people to have all the same stuff that I do. Um, in addition, sometimes I've seen, I've gotten some secondhand trucks and, um, you know, the previous owner sometimes uses questionable things on there. So I feel like it's just a nice touch to have um, all the hardware you'll need. So our plan is to include everything plus an extra screw or two because who doesn't like to have some extra screws to throw in the bin, right? Oh, you know, <clears throat> I, I apologize um, for the delay in responding to your comments. As this is only my second Facebook Live video, uh, I am not used to having to stop doing what I'm doing, look over and scroll down. Um, so I'm gonna go back and answer some of the questions that have come in already. Um, let's see. Noel, what motor am I running? There's no motor in it right now. I actually don't know. I have not um, made that decision. Um, if you've got a suggestion, I'm, I'm open to it. Um, since this is running super teeny tiny tires, um, and I'm, I'm wanting to keep it that way, this would be my class zero, um, it's probably gonna be pretty high turn. Um, I wanna keep it actually pretty realistic, so it may be like crazy high turn. Um, I just have to see. Um, I, I don't want this to be, you know, jumping rocks or anything like that, um, you know, and I want it to get good gas mileage, so. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Uh, yes. 
I'm sure I look like Emperor Palpatine from the side. Um, I have a fantastic, uh, whatever you call that, profile, I guess. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I think I commented on this in my last video. The only thing that I like better than the um, my, my profile is when people take pictures of the back of my head when I'm at like a barbecue or something. You know, those nice candid pictures that people love to take at parties and they don't tell you and you've got food in your mouth and your mouth, op your mouth is open. Um, they always like to take pictures of the back of my head and my bald spot. I love that. Uh, hey, Matthew. Glad you got everything. Um, that's good to know. Shirt, hardware, what else we got? Rock race in San Antonio on Saturday. Taking it easy today. Sweet, yeah. I have not built a rock racer yet, but I guess that's got to be on the list of stuff to do somewhere. So where did we leave off? Let's see. So I got my chassis mounts on. Um, the other thing we're going to have to install is our pan hard. That's one of the reasons that I removed the shocks. Getting to this um, can be, uh, I mean, not difficult, but it's, it's hard to get in there. Um, and get this mounted if the shock's in the way because it just it covers the hole. So, uh, let's see. I have to remember exactly how this goes on. So, um, this is, you know, chamfered on the inside to match up with this cross brace. And, yeah, there we go. So let's see. Grab some screws. Get one started. I definitely need to go rescue my magnetic mat for all these parts because you know these little containers are okay but it's much better to not have parts flying around welcome mike Sweet. Post up some pictures, Matthew. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice just cracked. I think I hit puberty like every week when my voice cracks. It's awesome. Um, love to see pictures. I love it when you guys post pictures of stuff uh, on our page. Um, I also love it when it's on Instagram, although I am a terrible Instagrammer. I, I don't know. What do they call that? Um, I, uh, I say I'm terrible. I just mean I'm not on there that much. But I love it when I get on there and all I see are these awesome pictures that you guys take. Um, it makes me happy on the inside. So we've got the chassis assembled. Um, we've got our axle assembled. The last thing I guess really to assemble is going to be the links and then we can put everything together. Uh, we've got all of our, so that's our two lowers. I believe that's the pan hard and that's going to be the upper. <clears throat> oh fun. I love putting rod ends together. Um, in case anybody's wondering, we did design the kit to use, uh, let's see, we'll do, where do you prefer? Uh, I guess probably on the Facebook page, um, the visitor posts, uh, or, um, yeah, I think that's the best place for, for pictures. Because um, when I see them, I will usually like them, you know, the Facebook like. Uh, I always like them, but, uh, and then I usually will repost it to the page if I'm not swamped trying to track down United States Postal Service errors. Um, those guys, they kill me sometimes. Um, it's funny because uh, I'm, I'm constantly telling people, you know, <clears throat> when they ask where their stuff is, it's in the mail, <laughs> which should be obvious. But I think people give USPS a bad rap. I think we've mailed like 17,000 packages and I've had less than five that actually were lost. Some of those I, I question if they were actually lost, um, but you know, what can you do? Now wait a second, so this is my upper. So we designed the upper and the lowers to use the longer rod ends. Um, and these are Traxxas, what is it, like 1942? I can't remember what the, the bag is called. Uh, let's see, I've got it in my, my box of goodies. Yeah, 1942, right ends. So the uppers and the lowers are going to use the longs. Uh, the pan hard, we designed to use the short. So when you buy the kit, if you pick up the Traxxas right ends that are on the product page, you will actually have plenty extra. So 
for instance, this is everything I'm going to need for this kit. And without dumping it out and making a big mess, um, I've got a ton extra. Probably actually have enough to do a rear four link. And yes, we are working on that um, as well. Just need to make the correct link. Ah, the correct length links. That is in process. Will I offer the frame mounts only for those of us that run AR44s under the TF2? Yes, absolutely, Travis. Every single one of the parts in this kit is available individually. Um, you can buy the link mounts individually. You can buy, uh, you know, the, just the standard. So if you want um, to, to use these on like a Beast 2, you can. Um, we have this specific pan hard for the, for the what, the G-Land of the Beast 2, I think use the same one. Um, we offer the trusses individually. So if you're running an RC four-wheel drive kit and you break your upper truss somehow, I don't know, can't imagine anyone would do that. Actually, no, someone is going to do that. All of it is sold individually. Um, even the chassis mounts are sold individually. They're, well, I say individually. The chassis mounts are sold in pairs. Um, but I think that's still a pretty good deal because, man, if you break one of those chassis mounts, gosh, send me pictures. If someone can break a chassis mount actually wheeling their truck, you know what, I will, I will just replace it. Only if they can tell me like how they did it. Um, and if the rest of the chassis remained intact, I would be amazed. No, trying to do all this on camera, but I forget sometimes <laughs> where the camera or what the camera can and cannot see. For instance, I notice as I watch myself on the video, I notice I'm doing everything in the bottom left hand corner. I don't know how many of you guys have actually ever made a video like this. It's interesting. It's especially interesting talking to myself. Even though you people are, you know, you guys are responding, and I appreciate that. It's much more fun when people respond. I feel less crazy. That's not true. I always feel crazy. Anybody see? Let's see. I think John. John, you said you were going to see that Joker movie. I think. If you're still watching, and you went and saw that, post up. Let me know how it was. My brother went and saw it, and he said it was less of a super villain movie and maybe more of like a tragedy. can believe that yeah you're welcome Travis um, all of the parts by the way are already available on the site I'm not sure if they are linked as in like they're listed as related products for the three link yet I'm not sure if I got that far into it um, but they are all on the site for sure I'm good, keep talking. Keep talking, you're diagnosing me. That's what my wife says. Or well, no, that's not what she says. She says, keep talking, I'm diagnosing you. Because, you know, I guess we're all a little bit crazy in our own way. Some people may be just a little bit better about hiding it. No, I don't know. Anybody planning on going to scale nationals this year? Uh, Vegas, I don't remember the dates. I don't know if that's been, did they list the dates? Maybe they were gonna post them today, I can't remember. Kind of a crazy weekend. I'm looking at going. If somebody wants to go. It's always more fun to go with people you know. But then, man, I always meet the coolest people at, at that event, Sork Scale Nationals. See some of the coolest trucks. I love going to that. I missed it last year. Just had so much going on with the family. But this year, I think we're going to make it happen. Well, I would say that my links came out okay. You know, I'm not going to go through and make these absolutely insanely perfect. Because ain't nobody got time for that, right? But I think we're doing all right so far. 
and we're doing good on time. 30 minutes in. That's not bad. Hoping to get all of this. Uh, see, what am I doing? I'm losing my mind. Hoping to get all of this assembled within the hour. Hoping to keep these Monday night videos to an hour. Partly because <clears throat> if I talk for any longer than that, I won't be able to talk for the rest of the week. Such tender vocal cords, I guess. I don't know. Oh, see, now I went and dropped something. Got to use my toes like a monkey to pick it up. Crawlapalooza, sweet. Yeah. Man, when was the last time I went to Crawlapalooza? It's been a long time. It's been longer than it should than it should be. I need to do a better job of planning out my calendar for events. I'm not sure what the best way to do that is. But I guess like a lot of people, you know, you end up with kids and you end up having basketball games and volleyball matches and stuff to go to that you get to go to, I guess is how I should say it. Because I do enjoy going to them. I hate missing them. Gosh, I think, man, the last time I went to Disney, Oklahoma, I think was when it was... I can't remember if, it, if I can't remember if the last time was the time that like everything got rained out and they had to like open the dam, or if that was two times ago. Um, I wish Eric Matson was on here right now because he has a, a good story he'd share about going to Crawlapalooza. I won't tell it. I'll let him save it. I'll save it for him in case he wants to, to pop up and add it in. So I've got my two extra little spacers in here that come with the kit. <clears throat> know if that's visible on camera um, but that's going to come with the kit it's really just for tweaking things um, you know people run in different rod ends or uh, you know depending upon the drop of your servo arm you may or may not need a spacer here or there just to get everything lined up um, there's a lot that can go into a pan hard suspension in terms of having the links the same length and at the same angle and all of that it is uh, quite important, so you want to make sure that's all right. Um, let me see. So, don't even remember what these screws were for. I think this was for the skid plate that I took off, right? Exactly. Yep. So I'm gonna move those out of the way. So that I don't confuse myself with them any further. Uh, let's see. Extra hardware. So this was. That is my servo arm. These were holding down. What was that holding down? This is my shocks. Okay, so um, I guess when I say we include all the hardware you'll need with the kit, I am assuming that you've already got your shocks installed and mounted. Uh, getting this in, I'm glad I'm not trying to do this and hold the camera because this is going to be fun, probably, trying to get all this stuff together. Uh, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let me see. Uh, what's the best way to do this? I guess if we go upside down... What's the first thing we want to put on? Let's see, servo arm will probably be fun to get to. I'm gonna put that on first. Uh, where's my tool? There we go. Oh, hey, Eric. Ah, that's funny that you joined. I was, someone was just talking uh, about Crawlapalooza and I was talking about the last time that I went and then it made me think of, of your story about going to Crawlapalooza. <clears throat> I think it was Crawlapalooza or was it Scalapalooza? Your story of, of going there, um, getting there, I guess I'll say a little bit early. But I'll let you share that story with people if you want to. But super fantastic. Let me see. Okay, so we've got that on. So hmm, I don't know what order in terms of putting the links on what's going to be easiest. This is going to end up looking like a freaking octopus attacking something. So our links are going to mount on the inside. So actually, rather than just start with the tool, I'm just going to start this by hand. And then I'll use the tool. Missed today. What you working on? Oh, what's up, Sean? Uh, we're putting our new heavy-duty three-link kit for TF2 on our... Blazer TF2 project truck. Um, oh, uh -huh. 
should have sorted these screws up better. Now, wait a second. Was that link supposed to go on the inside or the outside? This today. Oops. Upper first? Okay, we'll do upper first. Since I'm going to go back and do the upper first, I can't remember. It seems like the lower links would screw in from the outside, right? Because otherwise, how am I going to get a screw in there? Somebody chime in, let me know. Eric, I know you've built some of these. <clears throat> do I put this lower link on from the inside or the outside? I can't remember. I don't have the instructions pulled up in front of me. Probably don't want to tax this laptop by trying to look up the instructions. Work my way down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, since Eric's sharing it, for those of you that aren't reading the comments, Eric drove uh, from Austin to, to Disney the weekend what, before. Um, I think realizing, or not, not realizing that Crawlapalooza was the following weekend. See, the man works too hard. That's the problem. Eric, you do work too hard. You work too much. So he was exhausted, wasn't even thinking, got all ready, got in his car, drove up there. Nobody was around. And he's just like, where the hell is everybody? And then he realized, yeah, it's next weekend. So then he, he drove all the way back home to Austin, turned right around. I feel like I would have, like, I don't know, stopped taking in a movie, something. Maybe just got in a hotel room, made a, made a vacation out of it anyway. Maybe I'm crazy. Let's see. Well, that's not working. Is that, is that about right? Is that how the story went here? I can't remember. Anybody want to rescue me? Let me know uh, if that lower link is supposed to go on the inside or the outside, since I can't remember. And why do I have an extra screw? Where did that come from? These questions and more answered right now as we build this. Let me see. Let's see. All right, we got a comment. Maybe that's somebody saving me get this shock put in so at least the truck will stand by itself and you know I purchased the longer mounts for this the G land 2 am I even pronouncing that correct correctly correctly I don't know did you turn yep whatever looks straight for upper Eric Matson yep yeah, okay so let me see whatever looks straight for upper Shocks don't really have. Okay, there we go. Uh, we'll want to remember to get our drive shaft in, although that's not really too bad. Big of a deal to fix later. Um, let me see. Wonder if I should do. Well, you said top down, Travis, so I'm thinking we'll do our upper. <coughs> Which actually, that upper is going to be interesting to get in. I'm going to flip this thing back around. Every time I flip it upside down, I lose all orientation of what I'm doing. Where did this nut go? Anybody know where that nut went? What it goes to? So let's see, we're on this side. That screw is unnecessarily long. That must not be the right screw. This guy, where does that get me? Yeah, that'd be better. So, normally I would probably put some light Loctite on some of these things, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you Loctite your link mounts on these things? I'm so used to axial stuff. Everything's, you know, plastic and nylon, so it acts like a lock nut already. And I don't lock tight things usually in plastic. Although I know they make plastic lock tight. At least I believe they make it. Oh, let's see. Go on your home. There we go. Snug it down a little. Oh, see. What did I do? Forgot to put the drive shaft in. We'll fix it later. That's not a big deal. 
Where did this nut come from? It's driving me crazy. Is this one of the leaf spring nuts? It is. Haha. -ha. So that's what that extra screw came from. So you guys gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Keep me in check. Close enough. Oh my god, extra screws. I have like 10 lying around for a G2. Not sure how. Maybe keep extra just in case. Haha. <laughs> If I get out of work at a decent hour on Mondays, I'll come over. Eric, man, I would I would love that. Um, you know, come over, we'll get you some food. You can hang out, play with toy trucks, have some fun. Then people can hear a different voice, so it's not just mine all the time. Yeah. Wondering, let me see. Like, I think I might want to space these shocks out. This does not seem like it's long enough for me. But I know it is, but I guess uh, since these aren't the stock shocks, I'm not really sure how this, um, what am I looking for? Words. Yeah, let me see. So these guys are gonna go like this, yeah. I have done something incorrectly here. What did I do here? Did I... Do I need to put the... Uh, don't tell me that I need to put that on there. Uh, why do I suspect that's the case? Let me see. So if I do that... Yep. Yeah. I think I need to move the truss back. That's what I did. Oh, joy. Won't this be fun? Let's see. What's the fastest way to do that? <laughs> so, in my infinite wisdom... <clears throat> I put the truss Hope you guys can see that I don't know. See this is what happens when you don't Actually use instructions I put the truss on the front of the link mounts And you can see it's got the axle Pushed way back So what I need to do is pull the truss off And Swap the mounts around Well not swap the mounts around But just swap the mounting holes uh, Not too big of an error But hey you know what We all make mistakes I make plenty. I mean, don't tell my kids that. Can't let them know. But no, that's not true. I tell them that I make mistakes all the time. I don't want them being perfectionists. Where the hell did the TF2 come from? Eric, it was up on the shelf. Um, along with, uh, I don't know, like your Unimog. Your Unimog, the King Gerald, a Wraith, uh, let's see, a Red Cat, TRX-4, Couple SCX tens, SCX ten two, some Wheelie Kings. You haven't been over in a while, man. It should be like the shelf of, of pride, but since I slack so much in working on my own vehicles, it's almost like the shelf of shame. Cause it's like the trucks just sit there and stare at me while I'm working. And they're saying like, dude, fix this. Okay, all right, I think this will correct that. So part of the reason that I'm doing this without having tried to pre-make some instructions is because I thought it would be more humorous to watch me bumble around doing this, just using educated guesses, <clears throat> because, I can't remember if I said this last week or not, because we've got an Axial Capra coming in, and I'm going to have Jackie, that works in the office, assemble it. And I think we're going to do a video series of it. And Jackie, oh Jackie, has never assembled anything RC before. So I think instead of having, I mean, I guess, I don't know, do I qualify as an expert, even though I make mistakes? 6x6, six six. yes, the 6x6 six six actually is in the garage. Um, that needs to, to come back up. Um, but instead of having someone that has experience, how about that? Instead of calling myself an expert and being cocky, I will say someone that's done something before, that is experienced, built the kit. I thought it would be cool to have someone that has never built one ever and see what their take is on it. Um, Jackie has actually been here for about six months. She um, did 
not have any previous RC experience joining us, but that's okay. She's just doing stuff in the warehouse, shipping. She's the one that's writing the, the thanks and the smiley faces on you guys' orders. That's not my handwriting. This is when I write thanks, you can't read it. Oh, look at that. See? Oh, that made it even better to put the drive shaft on. Perfect. Things are going to start happening now. It's like, yeah, better. Okay. So that's going to line up. That's going to line up. We actually should be able to leave the servo. Yeah, I guess we can leave the servo where it is. Uh, let's see. So now without losing my drive shaft, I'll flip this guy over, put the lower links on. Yes, they are saying, drive us, Eric. My poor trucks. Well, I drive them when they work, and I drive them when I have time. I actually got out with Caden a couple weeks ago. He took out the Red Cat, which I fixed last week. Because surprise, surprise, an 11-year-old with an RC crawler, not not really gentle on it. <laughs> I mean, that's I know that's probably shocking, but let's see. What do we got? What do we got? So these are extra long. Uh, one more. Okay. These screws are, yeah, that's plenty long. I actually think I had intended on using short screws. There is no reason to use a screw that is that long. That's just going to make it irritating to take out later. Or is this one of the long ones? Or the short ones? Let's see. Yeah, it'll be fun for Jackie. Uh, she actually likes getting into stuff. Um, you know, she's she said she's really excited to do it. So one of these, I think, is my extra leaf spring screw, so I'm going to take them out. Because again, I'm checking these to make sure I've got all the parts in the kit also. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, she said she was excited to do it. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take her to, to build it. Um, but I'm going to try and have her do it right here with this camera. Um, I'm going to try to not edit anything. And just, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we should have some bets placed on who thinks it's going to, how long people think it's going to take her. Maybe what we'll do is we will, gosh, can we start like a football pool or something, you know? And uh, after the first day of her building it, maybe people can place bets <laughs> how long they think it's going to take her. All right, let me see. So I'm guessing... If that goes on the inside, I feel like that doesn't provide a lot. Outside seems pretty wide, but let's see. I mean, all I really need is one picture, and I would have the answer to this, but that would require me to turn around and go to a different computer. We don't want that. It was fun building the SCX-10 too. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, it's it's gonna be different with her. I'm not sure how much I should just let her do it um, and follow the instructions. Um, I will admit I watched, uh, I guess I've watched, read, got information, whatever. I know there are some, uh, maybe some errors in the manual, which happens in every manual. And then I think somebody said that the instructions, for, like the screws are not to scale which I always liked it when the screws were to scale because then, you know, you know if you're doing something ridiculous. Uh, let's see, pan hard. So let's see, where does our pan hard go? Man, so these shocks just don't have a whole lot in them, but even without, you know, pan hard, oh God, that is that is just a lot better. <laughs> there's, there's no way around that. I mean, I love the leaf springs for the scale look, but son of a bitch. Wait, no, I did it on the right side. Woo! Well, now it's not family friendly. Damn it. YouTube's going to give me that PG-13 rating. Because I used the bitch word. Go in there. There we go. Okay. So close, and yet so far. You know, actually, <clears throat> Eric, it might be really fun if you came over and you helped Jackie build it. 
I mean, you know, it's not like I'm going anywhere, but it might be fun for her to hear from someone else that's not me. I don't know. Okay, so there we go. So that is the end of the install. Grand total time, 54 minutes, including me talking out my ass and having to take mounts off and put them back on. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to have to get the servo centered. Let's see how this looks. So I don't know how much you guys can see on the camera. Um, the links are lined up pretty well. I might actually add a spacer in between here to lift this up. Um, the links are the same length, which is important, but you want to make sure they're on the same plane as the suspension cycles. Um, I know I've seen some people that will like use a, a bent track bar and stuff like that, and that's usually fine on these. Um, but the main the main thing is you want to make sure the pivot points, the links are on the same plane. Um, this is really really close. Like I said, I think maybe a spacer in here would clean that up. <clears throat> And that's why we've got these in here. It's, uh, you know, when you're designing this stuff, the different servo manufacturers and then the different arms, these things always, um, I guess, cause you to have things sitting in different spots. So you kind of have to have some adjustability in there, and that's what we've got. Um, with these little spacers, <clears throat> um, I would not advise using the spacers just to fix, you know, link angle or anything like that but and what I mean is I wouldn't like try to somehow drop the axle and lift it just by adding little spacers everywhere um, but to clean up just a little bit of difference in the link planes let me see oh yeah that would be better so what is that that's eh, maybe one of these guys I think don't know if this nut's still going to fit, so I may have to replace this screw, but, oh, oh, I think that tightened up, let's see, oh yeah, now we'll be good, so that is a two millimeter spacer that I added on top of the steering arm, um, and I don't know if you guys are even able to see that on the camera, <clears throat> let me adjust this. And I'm, I'm guessing at what you guys can see here because there is a, I don't know, 20 second delay or so, maybe it's 15, between me actually talking and then me being able to see it on my screen. So we're going to have to hold this here for a little while. Uh, but yeah, that looks good. So hopefully um, you guys can see that everything lines up and is level. Um, of course, you know, the links don't have to be parallel to the axle upon suspension compression just want them parallel with each other so I think we did good there um, that's uh, definitely more travel than I had just with the leaf springs um, that is pretty easy to max out the shocks there's nothing else there so at this point <clears throat> I think my limiting factor is the shocks and the shock mounts possibly uh, the hoops you know um, I ordered some longer shock hoops from the G-Land 2. Probably will get those installed, um, I guess, this week. Builders need to have lots of random spacers. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sweet, yeah. Um, thank you for the comment. Sorry. I, I need to find a better way, I guess, of <clears throat> watching uh, comments on these videos because I, I get so tunnel vision I don't know I get so into what I'm doing I forget to actually look over and see what you guys are saying and half the fun of this is for you guys to say things so um, I hope you guys uh, yeah I hope you guys if you're interested in the kit will send us questions comments <clears throat> anything like that um, sorry I'm losing my voice right here at the end um, we are going to go ahead and I will get the shock hoops installed. Uh, I think I'm going to take these shocks, move them to the rear, and use...
these coilovers in the front because honestly that's the most scale thing to do um, since right now from, from the scale point of view this just looks like <laughs> set of shocks no springs uh, and I do want it to look realistic since it's going on that blazer that Wes did such a good job on um, if you guys don't know who Wes Bracewell is man go check out the stuff that he builds um, it's stupid crazy awesome the details that he puts into stuff so anyway um that's it for me if you guys have any questions about the kit please drop us a line on the website um and i guess uh that's going to wrap it up for tonight i plan to be back on next monday night at eight o'clock we will have something new for you uh maybe we'll have some of the capra builds um we've got some other things lined up it might be those i don't know um please check out our website if you haven't already it's lockeduprc.com and thanks for watching